we mustn't talk about community only as a as a now. It's not a self-standard now. And as I can understand, it is a very good. When we say community, we say we commune. We interact with each other. We share in life together. We make community. We create community. Where community is now, it's almost passive. Community as verb is immediately active, even activistic. Restoration is at the heart of the work that the Safe House does. I don't know if you guys know what the Safe House does. Is there anyone who knows what the Safe House does or what the purpose of the Safe House is? Is there anyone? Is there anyone? Councillor? It's a That used to be the prerogative, councillor. That used to be the prerogative of the safe house that we initially just harboured um, families, women and the children and we safeguarded them. But recently, with the spate of family violence increasing and with violence against women and children increasing, we decided to change our constitution. And it is not a local initiative, it is a national initiative. We belong to what we call the Western Cape Shelter Movement and the National Shelter Movement, and we also belong to uh, human trafficking movements. So what we then realized is that gender-based violence is bigger than just domestic violence. Gender-based violence is prevalent, I will refer to certain statistical data, and also the sources that we have found which leads to gender-based violence. I would like to start with one of our, our um, our founding principles which we use to deny people their human rights is to challenge their very humanity and working with ladies and trying to restore them is quite a challenge because you realize that the women's identities and their humanity has been affected by how they were treated but here comes the catch not only within the relationship context which led them to be taken up in the safe house but we find that it is a generational issue. For example, they grew up in a house where there was gender-based violence. And for this year, we, along with the uh, Women's Legal Center, will be looking at various sources or various causes for gender-based violence and the history of gender-based violence. So statistical data, I'll be very quickly, 177,620 crimes committed against women. 43,540 crimes committed against children. So we find that out of the 20,000 murders that we have in South Africa, we have almost 4,000 murders of the vulnerable, or at least the most vulnerable, women and children. It, it includes boy children and girl children. Our statistics for the Western Cape, and this was shocking to us because at the, at the Gender-Based Violence Summit, we discussed why is the Western Cape the forerunner when it comes to statistical data on domestic violence. This means that the woman has a protection order and there is a breach of the protection order. If you look at this, the figure, it is 25,796 cases of gender-based violence within a family context with a protection order that was not included in the previous statistical data. We also looked at the various sources because if we do not look at our, our statistical data which is available, then we will not be able to deal with what is the causes of gender-based violence. We looked at the motives and this one was quite shocking. We see, and I think everyone knows, that people are saying, oh, there's, there's, there's genocide and 
and there's white genocide and farm worker, uh, far, oh, there's a lot of farm murders, but look at the statistical data because I work on fact. There were 62 murders within a farm context, but look at the statistical data on mob justice, 849. Look at gang-related statistics, 973, which is also linked with the mob justice concept. What we can ask ourselves as legal people, because there was a lot of legal people at the conference, is why do you have mob justice? And that is indicative of the fact that the communities are tired of going to government, tired of not uh, receiving justice within the context, tired of of their rights not being addressed, therefore they take the law into their own hands. The Western Cape, by the way, at the highest spate of um, political analysts or marches during the last financial year. That shows an, an absolute distrust in the system leading to violent protests. The cost of gender-based violence, for everyone who thought that gender-based violence is not their business, they must look at the GDP, they must also look at the amounts being spent on gender-based violence. 28 billion rand being spent on gender-based violence. That is for the care of victims, etc. And I just want to tell you that for shelters, we don't receive a lot of money. We receive 9 rand per person per day. However, if you are in prison, you receive 350 rand per person per day. Clearly the rights of the perpetrator is being highlighted while the rights of the victim is not being addressed and that cannot be a concept of restorative justice. This is one of my favorite cases. It's, it's, it, since um, 2015 we have seen that there's a lot of case law on, on, on especially social justice, what is to be understood with social justice, what is to be understood with restorative justice but this is a specific quotation that I think rocked me to the core. I never realized how strongly people were feeling about the land debate. In a publication of Petros Nkosi, he said, the land, our purpose is the land. That is what we must achieve. The land is our whole lives. We plow it for food. We build our houses from the soil. We live on it and we are buried in it. When the whites took away the land from us, we lost our dignity of our lives. And then he gives an explanation. The question on, on expropriation is also a big question for us because we realize we work with victims. It is so difficult. We have a three month program sponsored by government. But you know what the difficulty is? When that lady has to be reintegrated back into her community, she has to because she doesn't have land, she doesn't have a house, she doesn't have the basic means, she doesn't have a job. She has to go back to that perpetrator, which means she goes back to that situation of family violence. That cannot be restorative justice. From our specific uh, vantage point, we have one of our councillors on our board, and she is, for example, lobbying the housing department that emergency housing, and I don't know whether you know this, but emergency housing is not given for victims of family violence. Family violence is not a category of emergency housing in terms of either a local policy, either in terms of a Western Cape policy, and also not in terms of a national policy. So what they basically do is, we build up the lady for three months, we restore her dignity, we give her various concepts, and I want to say that restorative justice means nothing if you send that lady back to her situation where she's humiliated, assaulted, raped, and her children grow up in that context. My second favorite case is water services. I think that is also very uh, uh, topical at this specific stage. We find that water is becoming increasingly difficult to come by. We see that people cannot afford water. One client, for example, um, her water was 600 rand in July. It is now 1,800 rand. Just note that domestic violence is specifically related to hardships and to poverty. We find that in 100% of our ladies, 
So when we realized that someone is paying that exorbitant amount for water, we started looking at it. And then we looked at the constitutional implications of it. The Section 9 of the Water Services Act says there's two methods to determine how much water must be allocated to a person. The one is 25 litres per person per day, and the other one is 6 kiloliters for a family. And we found that all families in Stellenbosch, regardless of how many people or how many backyard dwellers stays on that specific earth, they pay exactly the same rate for water. Which means that a family of 12 living on one earth doesn't have an allocation of 25 litres of water per day. They have an allocation of 12. That is clearly unconstitutional. We have written letters that is a forerunner for a constitutional case where we are going to be asking that debate. And the basis of our debate is human dignity for people was already tied up in land. It is tied up in water. Why are we having exports of water out of this country? Why are we having people with less than 12 litres of water per day? It is not only inhumane, but it creates a whole dysfunctional community and if there's hardships, then you can trust me, there will be domestic violence.